Greetings everyone, I'm Adam Harriton. I'm hanging out here in the beautiful cold woods and in this video I'd like to share with you a fascinating feature of plants that largely goes unnoticed. And that's the ability of plants to make noises, or according to some people, to scream, particularly under stress. Now of course, general plant noises aren't unfamiliar to those of us who actually spend time in the company of plants. We hear plants in the rain, we hear them in the wind, we hear plants when they break, or when they sway, or when their fruit capsules explode to release seeds. But what about when plants are cut at their stems, or when they're extremely thirsty? Have you ever heard a plant scream in these situations? Well, according to a brand new study, plants do emit airborne sounds, especially when they're cut at the stems or when exposed to drought-like conditions. And these sounds can be detected meters away from the stressed plants. Interestingly, many news outlets have picked up on this story, and now we're seeing headlines claiming that plants not only make noises, but they literally scream under stress. So is that true? Is that what plants are doing, screaming when cut in half? or when deprived of water? Well, that's the topic of this video, so if you're still with me, if you have a few minutes that you're willing to share, let's explore together the fascinating subject of plant bioacoustics. Now before we get into the actual study, let's first discuss the general topic of plant stress. No doubt plants are subjected to stress. Every living organism, you included, believe it or not, is subjected to stress. And contrary to what we may want to believe, stress isn't always a bad thing because it can obviously increase the fitness and survivability of an organism. Now the ways in which plants respond to stress is quite unique because, at least from the human perspective, plants are sessile meaning they're fixed in one place. So plants obviously cannot physically move away or escape from stressors in the way that we can. Instead, plants adjust to adverse conditions by undergoing certain changes, both developmentally and physiologically. And we can physically see some of the changes that take place when plants are stressed. For example, in the change of a plant's color or in its shape. And of course, we know that stressed plants produce many hormones and a wide variety of complex compounds as a result of and to cope with stress. So for now, hopefully we can both agree that like humans, plants do experience stress. But the big question is, do plants scream when stressed? Well, a brand new study was published out of Tel Aviv University in Israel. And this study can be viewed for free in its entirety on the BioArchive database. And if you're unfamiliar with BioArchive, it's an online collection of unpublished scientific preprints related to life sciences. Now these articles are not peer reviewed and hence this new study has not been peer reviewed yet. Though as I mentioned earlier, it has been picked up by many news outlets and it has been a pretty hot topic recently. And what's fascinating about this study is that it shows for the first time that stressed plants emit airborne sounds that can be recorded remotely. Not only that, but the study's authors suggest that these airborne sounds can potentially be detected by other plants and animals and can possibly alter their behaviors. Now the researchers performed a few experiments in this controlled study using tomato and tobacco plants that were subjected to either physical cutting of the stem or drought. And what the researchers found was that on average, drought stressed tomato plants produced about 35 sounds per hour Drought stressed tobacco plants produced 11 sounds per hour. Tomato plants that were cut produced around 25 sounds per hour. And tobacco plants that were cut produced approximately 15 sounds per hour. Control groups, so the plants that did not experience these stressors, produced on average less than one sound per hour. Now these sounds, which were picked up by microphones positioned away from the plants, could not be detected by human ears because the sounds were produced in the ultrasonic range. And the ultrasonic range includes frequencies greater than 20 kilohertz. And 20 kilohertz is the limit of human hearing. 
But although the sounds were produced beyond the human audible range, the sounds were not produced beyond the range of many animal species which can detect ultrasonic frequencies. And in a few minutes, we're going to discuss some potential implications of the study's results. Another interesting finding was that whenever researchers programmed a machine learning model to make accurate predictions, the machine learning model predicted with over 70% accuracy which plant was experiencing which stress based solely on the intensity and frequency of the sounds. So, tomato and tobacco plants were either cut or deprived of water, and these stressed plants made noises that could be detected meters away from the plants. But where exactly did the noises come from? Because clearly, tomato and tobacco plants don't have voice boxes or mouths. Well, to even attempt to answer that question, we're going to have to look very briefly into a topic that sounds kind of complex, but I'll do my best to simplify it for our discussion. And that's the topic of cavitation. So cavitation, as it relates to botany, is a phenomenon that happens in the xylem of plants. And xylem, if you recall from your grade school biology classes, is part of the plant's vascular system that's involved in the transportation of water and minerals from the roots up the stem and eventually to the shoots and leaves of the plant. Cavitation in the xylem occurs when dissolved air in the water expands eventually creating air bubbles that interfere with water transportation, resulting in audible clicks that can be picked up by recording devices. Now, cavitation within plants has been studied for a long time, and noises produced during cavitation have been documented in the scientific literature dating back at least to the 1960s. So cavitation and cavitation-induced sounds aren't really anything new. Additionally, cavitation isn't unique to tomato and tobacco plants. It can be detected in most herbaceous and woody plants that have stems at least a few millimeters in diameter. So if cavitation and cavitation-induced noises have been known for decades, what makes this new study from Tel Aviv so unique? Well, up until this point in time, the cavitation-induced noises have only been recorded when recording devices have been attached directly to the plants. So literally on the plants and never any distance away from the plants. This new study from Tel Aviv is unique because the researchers captured airborne sounds using microphones positioned away from the plants. Now, perhaps not too surprisingly, not everyone is in agreement that all sounds produced by stressed plants are the product of cavitation. However, the Tel Aviv researchers suggested in their study that cavitation was a likely reason why the tomato and tobacco plants produce their stressful noises. So, stressed plants produce airborne sounds that can be detected meters away. The question we may want to ask ourselves now is, why? Why do plants make sounds at all? Why would plants go through the trouble? What's the reasoning behind this? Well, the easy answer to this question would be this. Noises associated with cavitation could be just the simple byproduct of strains and tensions experienced by plants, whether they're physiological or biomechanical strains. Nothing more, nothing less, just an artifact of general strains. And in fact, many people subscribe to this reasoning. But a perhaps more nuanced answer, which is one that is gaining more and more support these days from scientists, is that plants may create sounds to signal either to other plants or to animals as a way of conveying pertinent information. Remember that the sounds produced from the stressed tomato and tobacco plants were in the ultrasonic range, and although you and I cannot naturally hear these sounds, many animals and insects can. For example, moths can detect frequencies in the ultrasonic range, and the Tel Aviv researchers suggested that stressed plants may signal, perhaps, to moths that could then use that information to avoid laying eggs on the stressed plants. Additionally, the Tel Aviv researchers suggested that stressed plants might be able to signal to predators like bats that could pick up on the noises from stressed plants that are under attack by, for example, caterpillars, thus telling the bats where an easy source of food is. There are other benefits associated with sound production. From a plant's perspective, sound production is energetically much cheaper than the production of volatile chemicals that are commonly used in similar situations. 
and sounds can spread rapidly into the immediate and surrounding environment, making it an effective mechanism for signaling when a rapid response is required. But back to the original question, do plants scream when stressed? We already know that they make audible vibrations. This has been shown in multiple studies, not just the one conducted in Tel Aviv. But do audible vibrations equate to screams? Well, I guess it's all subjective and open to interpretation. Nowhere in the original study do the researchers mention the word scream. We only see that word being used in the news headlines and in the bodies of these articles. And I guess I'm guilty of using that word as well because I'm using it throughout this video. But ultimately we cannot say, or at least I cannot say for sure that plants are screaming when cut or deprived of water because no direct proof exists. But we can say that plants do generate audible vibrations that can be detected meters away from the plants and these audible vibrations could potentially be picked up by other animals and other plants and could possibly potentially alter those other organisms behaviors but i guess we could equally say that plants are not necessarily screaming but they're perhaps singing or humming or hooting or hollering or simply clicking to convey pertinent information or for reasons currently unknown to humans So, although it might seem a bit folklorish or out there to suggest that plants intentionally have the ability to generate sounds, decades of research suggests that plants do at least create and respond to sound waves of different frequencies, particularly in ranges outside of human limits. Though again, the reasoning behind these ultrasonic green symphonies is, go figure, still a mystery. And perhaps it's best left that way. Thanks so much for watching this video. I appreciate it as always. If you enjoyed this video and you're not subscribed to the Learn Your Land YouTube channel, feel free to subscribe to the Learn Your Land YouTube channel. You can also head on over to learnyourland.com, sign up for the email newsletter so that we can stay in touch. You can also follow me on social media at Learn Your Land on Instagram and Facebook. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you on the next video.